Let me begin by saying that marriage is an act of worship. When two people get married, it's not just love between two people. And it's not just needs. It is an act of worship. And Allah rewards for marriage like he rewards for other acts of worship. And marriage can be a pathway to paradise. But it is also a test. Everything in life is a test. But it's a good test. And it's one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and honors. At the same time, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us guidance of how to make sure that we live a beautiful life. The husband with his wife, the wife with her husband. And Allah encourages young people to get married. The Prophet وسلم, encouraged young people to get married. He said, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata'a minkum al falyatazawaj. O young men and O young women, especially the men, whoever is able to afford to provide for a family, for a wife and, and children, then get married. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa says, إِيَّكُونُ فُقَرَاءَ Allah says, وَأَنْكِحُ الْأَيَامَ مِنْكُمْ وَالصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ عِبَادِكُمْ وَإِمَائِكُمْ Support and help your single men and women to get married. إِيَّكُونُ فُقَرَاءَ يُغْنِهِمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ If they are financially poor, Allah will assist them by providing them, by providing them and supporting them. But of course, Allah is talking to the, for the community and the parents to support their children to get married when they're ready and able to provide and mature enough. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves marriage. And very quickly to the young people, look, wallahi, I know how hard it is for young people these days. We have so many desires and temptations all around us. Whether it's on social media, on our, on, on our internet, on our phones, on TV, when we go to work or school, even on your ride to school or to work or coming back home or just walking, everywhere we go, the temptations are tested every single minute. So it's hard. And in this day and age, we live in a hypersexualized society. And the young people are finding it very hard. Marriage is delayed. The society doesn't support it. And for Muslims, it becomes even four times harder. Number one, we tell them, oh, you're not ready for marriage until you're a certain age. Number two, you're not allowed to have a boyfriend or girlfriend. Number three, you don't look at haram. Number four, uh, we say to them that it, the only way is to fast. Number five, the temptations are all around them. Number six, in our culture, we make marriage very difficult. Financially, the process is so long, the conditions are so many, subhanallah. And on top of that, some parents make it even more difficult. They look at their own desires and their own uh, personal uh, needs. So they look as if the person that their daughter or son is going to marry, it's as if they're marrying them. So it's as if they own them and they make it very difficult. Some of them say, let me make an istikhara. You can't make istikhara for someone else. Some of them, they say, I made a dua and Allah showed me that this girl or boy is not good for you. The, these things are very selfish. And then, and, or some, some parents believe that that's the way to go, but this is wrong. This is ignorance. This is not the way. So the person who has to make this istikhara is a person going to get married. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that Islam is not the thing that, made, that makes it hard on you. Islam came to make marriage and relationships easy and simple and straightforward and guide you. But it's society that makes it hard. There are people who earn billions of dollars off young people's sexuality and their bodies. The girls and the women are the product and the boys and the men are their customers and a little bit of both. And what they've done is they've exploited our minds and young people's minds to make them think, especially the girls, that you know, the meaning of independence and the meaning of being a strong woman is to delay your marriage, is to follow your career and the education as a priority, to uh, love herself in the sense of do whatever you want so long as you're happy, and even to hate men. Whereas in Islam, it tells you you can pursue your career, you can pursue your education and still love yourself, but change the priorities. Your priority is your femininity. Your priority is, as Allah created you in your nature, don't, look, don't go past the motherhood. Don't devalue motherhood. Don't devalue being a wife. Don't devalue relationships and partnerships. And you know, we hear a lot about 
some of our sisters, as they get older and they get affected by all this, they delay it until they're close to menopause. And then we see now on social media and, and articles where young, uh, late, when ladies come up and they, even non-Muslims, they regret and they think, I've lost my life and I would, would have loved to be a mother earlier and I would have loved to have a partner relationship, I want my children. And also with men, it makes them hate the idea of marriage by giving them alternative, uh, inappropriate and uh, haram you know, images and things like that, so that the young man thinks to him, why, why would I need a wife? I'll just serve my desires in that way. The hell with marriage, the hell with a woman coming and, uh, you know, restricting my sexuality and restricting my desires and telling me what to do and then, and then throwing me away to rot, you know, for some reason. And the society that we live in is to be blamed. A teenager can have a relationship and have sex with another teenager in the name of exploring, in the name of uh, growing up and sexuality has become superficial young people they find it hard to talk to their parents about marriage so I invite parents and I encourage them to open the door to talk to your young sons and daughters about relationships and marriage enough of it being a taboo topic I am sick in my education field of hearing parents who attack us as teachers as imams to stop us from talking about this topic to their young people and then they come running to us when something goes wrong. I'm actually getting angry right now, but I'm going to calm myself down. Because these young people, I am concerned about them and they break my heart. My young sons and daughters, excuse me if I called you that because I'm like your father's age, don't blame religion and try to talk to your parents about this inshallah. You know, when young people don't have this outlet to talk about their natural needs and desires and what a relationship is about, they go and look for other outlets. And that is why we see how some of our sisters are going on social media to decorate themselves and display themselves because she wants to see if she's um, sexually attractive. She wants to see if she's wanted and needed. She wants to see if she is desired. You know, she wants to talk to, to guys so that, that she can see if she is valued. She's, you know, still attractive and wanted. The guy wants to see another outlet since their parents and whoever around them don't give them that space they go and explore their own and where are they going to explore brothers and sisters the world the society is open for them to teach them about anything about sexuality and it is void of morality and religion why don't you sit them down and you learn about it and teach them there is no taboo there are over three thousand questions in the books of fiqh just about sexuality over three thousand masail Mas'ala, uh, questions among the fuqaha. And we make it a taboo topic. Ah, they're still young. And we call them little kids. No. In this society, we see that marriage is placed in the last thing to go for. And that's why there's a high rate of divorce. It's about the individual. It's about your needs and desires and wants. That's about it.